Rated Rs. Today, we are installing the Vasisto Dual 1080p Motorcycle Dash Cam on the V7 Guzzi. Let's dive in. First thing you want to do is lay out all the tools that you're going to need. Make sure your directions are held down if it's breezy. Uh, you're going to want to obviously connect all of this stuff like I already did and make sure it works before you install it on your motorcycle. You don't want to go through the entire process of installing this thing just to find out that you got a broken unit or whatever. Next thing you want to do is line it all up here from start to finish, get all your components up, decide where you want to put everything, where you're going to put your little screen, where you want to wire things, where you want to conceal the wires, get it all planned out ahead of time. Pro tip, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. All right, so Vasisto has made this very easy. Pretty much that's the only diagram you're gonna need right there. It tells you where to plug everything in and the rest of it is just where you wanna put it on the bike. I don't even need the instructions. They have awesome instructions. All I need is this fact. Frequently asked questions. All right, to protect my unit from getting banged up, dropping it on the pavement, etc., while I'm installing it, I'm actually gonna put it into its protective case. If you're in a Moto Guzzi V7, you're gonna to wanna to take off your seat and you're gonna to wanna to loosen up your tank by removing a bolt and letting you lift it up to get wires under it. Put this somewhere nice and clean and safe. Okay, next we're gonna wanna remove this bolt to loosen up the tank. This actually makes me pretty nervous to do metal right next to your beautiful tank. So what I recommend is doing is putting a cloth down first. I am trying out this universal socket from a company called Sigotu, uh, which makes these cool tools and connectors um, and universal sockets like this one. I'll put a link to them below. It's called Sigotu, it's pretty cool. Fits up to, um, this particular one goes from seven millimeter to 19 millimeter. So pretty neat little tool. You just press it on like this and then turn. All right, set that nut and washer aside. All right, so I'm thinking of putting a camera here, right on my stock of the turn signal, just like that. May pick up a little bit of this light, but that's okay. And I'm thinking about putting the, the back camera, pretty much similar location right there. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna put these on with tie wraps first before I commit to putting the 3M tape on there just to see if the image is gonna to be too much interfered with by the side of the light housing here on the front and on the back. So Vasisto is cool enough to label this front camera and this little green tag here and the back camera is labeled back, quite easy. So this fastener here is to connect to the main screen which is gonna go on the handlebars. It's made of a nice aluminum, very sturdy. On the inside here, it has velvet to keep your handlebars from being scratched. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting it like right about here and having it just go straight like this for purposes of aerodynamics. Actually, this, this part here, which they call the host, which has your, your color screen on it, they recommend putting it under the seat because it's not waterproof. I think I might actually fit this under the seat. This, this does fit. It might also minimize the wiring if I put that host under the seat. There is a switch that you can optionally install that'll allow you to um, take pictures, for example, or start and stop recording. All right, so we're just temporarily putting these on here with the tie wraps. I've tie wrapped both sides of the front camera and the rear camera. Here's what the front looks like. Nice and low profile. All right, use a 530 seconds Allen key to remove your carbon fiber side panel to reveal the battery. When you take out your last one, make sure you hold the carbon fiber panel so it doesn't fall off and get scratched on the pavement. Set it somewhere safe. All right, so you're gonna need to remove this battery bracket here to pull the battery out enough to access the positive terminal. And you can do that with a 530 seconds um, Allen key. It's actually a star key. When you take it out, you gotta take it to the side a little bit. A little bit awkward to get it out. There it goes. Take your bolts out. All right, so we just did an install on this USB. So if you wanna see an install on how to connect this dual USB port, um, check out this video. So the Vasisto comes with the U-shape battery connectors. So we're just going to go ahead and loosen up the positive bolt and put that in there, loosen up the negative bolt and put that in there. All right, so you don't send any shocks to your power module. You're going to go ahead and just connect these to the terminals first and then connect the power module. So loosen up the positive just enough to slip that U connector under there. All right, so just to do this the best possible way, I'm painstakingly threading up the U connector through this red terminal cover. Be careful because I ripped the terminal cover a little bit. Windy day. Slip this in. U connector is a little bit wide, 
So what I'm gonna do is go under this connector for the battery tender, which is a little bit wider. Just hold it in place a little better. Hopefully you guys can see this. You know what, I'm actually gonna spin it around. Make it easier to put back down the terminal cover. Put it back in. Pull it back down the slack. Place the cover. Do the same thing for the negative. Right under, tighten it up. Make sure your wires are all tucked in. This is gonna to connect to the power module. Very easy connection. There's a little groove up here that goes into this slot on top of here. They even have arrows showing you which way to connect to which. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna wrap all of my connections with an electrical tape just to make sure it stays nice and dry and secure. I'll do that at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna wire this up under here. We'll deal with the slack later. Same thing here, you're gonna connect the red to the red on the main unit. This arrow is showing you which way to connect. As you can see, the system is powered on. All right, we're getting there. Actually, since I'm sitting this comfortably right in here, I'm gonna take the protective case off for now. Okay, this remote control is optional. It allows you to toggle the Wi-Fi on or off, and it also allows you to lock in video in case there's an emergency, and it also allows you to take snapshots. Very simple connection, blue to blue on the control unit. The indicator light means that the unit has power. So we'll put this um, somewhere, maybe up near the handlebar somewhere. It's pretty discreet. So I'm actually, for the rear camera, gonna use the extension wire. That just gives me enough slack to hide this wire with some tie wraps, which are actually included. And then I'll route this, and what I'm gonna plan on doing is taking this slack and tie wrapping it and putting it inside this bag here which is your seat cover bag for the, for the Guzzi. Yellow to yellow, very simple. Before I tie wrap it, I'm gonna just make sure that I have enough slack. So I'm just gonna tuck it inside the seat cover bag. Okay, we connect the front camera to the extension, lining up the um, slot, and then screwing this into place. So we're gonna conceal under the tank. But for now, let's just get it all wired up. We'll go over here, and once again, super easy. There's actually just one connector left on the main unit. Line up the slot, plug it in, and fasten it. Okay, I may I may have to disconnect one or two things um, as I'm installing this, but just want to get it all connected for now. And everything is connected. All right, so you can use the color screen here to change the views and check out the views. So as I can, as you can see here, my front camera does have my headlight in view, but I'm okay with that, just because I want it to be. I don't want to install it on the top of my headlight, although I might end up doing that just for fun. You can also check out the rear, and the rear has a little bit of the tail light in the bottom, but again, that's okay. And you could do like half and half, half screen, half screen. You could do the rear as a smaller screen, a few different options, so pretty cool. Okay, so actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this, root it under the rear light assembly cable, like this. Don't scratch your carbon fiber. Then I'm gonna root it up underneath this bar just to keep it nice and clean and low profile. Out of sight, out of mind. Make sure you have enough slack. I love tie wraps. Okay, so without taking the entire tank off, basically, I'm just gonna, I just drop this right through this little gap here and I'm kind of fishing it down. I see where it is, it's where I want it. Just gotta grab it. Loose, lift up the tank a little bit, shake it loose. So I got these um, trim removal pieces from Manalord Auto Parts. I'll put the link in the description below, just a bunch of plastic and some metal pieces and fasteners. It's actually coming in handy here because I'm using this to feed the wire backward far enough so where I can grab it. So I just took this interior panel remover tool and uh, it's got a, a little grip here, a little slot here so it's easy to catch a wire like this, and I fed it through and then reached under and grabbed it with my hands. Easy as that, takes a little bit of patience. I like that this is plastic so it doesn't scratch the paint. So what you wanna do is um, make sure that you have enough slack to turn the motorcycle without putting any pressure on the camera. So I'm gonna tie wrap this to this wire holder here. Turn the wheel, make sure you have enough to go both ways. And tie wrap it in place. 
I'm gonna use one of the heavy duty tie wraps that came with the camera system. Actually, first I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I have enough slack and then I'm gonna tie wrap it to this bundle here. All right, nice and snug. Go ahead and reconnect to your extension cord. Dial it in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, put electrical tape around this because this is made of metal and I just don't want it scratching up any of the paint anywhere. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to keep the wires away from your exhaust and anything hot. All right, so we gave that a nice wrap with electrical tape. Also keeps it nice and dry just in case I ever do get caught in the rain. Okay, so we're gonna lift up the tank with our left hand and tuck this wire in. Make sure it's not getting crushed by moving it around. It's loose. So notice there's no LED lights in here. That's because this has a smart power source. You don't have to turn it on and turn it off. It automatically turns itself on and automatically turns itself off once it detects that there's no voltage for a certain amount of time, like three minutes, I think. All right, now we're just tucking cables. Okay, so at first, I'm actually not gonna use this. I'm just gonna let the system go full auto. If I catch something that I wanna make sure doesn't get overwritten, I'll just pull over to the side of the road and you know do it manually. But I'm also just gonna make sure that I have a big enough SD card in here so that I don't have to worry about it. So I'm popping in a 32 gigabyte SD card. Goes right into the main unit. Make sure it's all formatted and that good stuff first. If you do want to display this, they've got a couple of different mounts to do it. Here's one here, you could just, it's got an adhesive on it and you can just put it up wherever, on your handlebars or wherever. And then they've got this more robust handlebar mount that has the nice velvet on the inside. Very, very high quality, turns 360 degrees. Very nice, I might actually put that on the handlebars at some point, but for now I'm just gonna keep it nice and clean and nice and discreet. Okay, I'm putting back on the protective case, you don't have to, but I just want to keep it from getting scratched up. I'm even gonna leave these um, protective wrappers on too. Front camera wire, do a quick tie wrap. Put that off. Always helps to set aside a little box you can use as a garbage can. Okay, I'm gonna lift up the tank and I'm gonna tuck this bundle from the front camera underneath. There's a nice little space with other wires where you can safely put it. Okay, I'm putting electrical tape around the front camera connector to the main unit. Okay, the seat comes down really close to this back fender here, so I am going to take this rear camera bundle and I'm gonna tuck it under this bracket here and then I'll tie wrap it. I'm actually gonna tie wrap it between these two nuts here to help hold it in place. Okay, fortunately the Vesisto unit here fits very nicely and very snugly right in between the fuse box and the filter housing. So I don't really think I have to anchor it. I'll just put the seat on top of it. Then I can easily open it to get the card out when I need to. So all that's left is to bundle up the extra wire from the power core. All right, so all we have to do now is bundle up the power module's cord. Once again, this is a smart power module. You don't even have to turn the unit on and off. It knows when to turn it on and off. I like automation. One less thing I have to do. Okay, I just lifted up the seat again and tucked the power module as well as the excess wire under the seat. Put the seat back down carefully and make sure that the the wire should be moving a little bit. You don't want anything crushed. For me, it's fitting. If you find that it's just not fitting in there well, you can also take off this left carbon fiber panel and just tuck the bundle right in there and then secure it back up. Okay, so I am tie wrapping the power wire and the front camera wire to the frame tube over here, just because I don't want it to interfere with these fuses here. Make sure everything is nice and tucked out of the way. You also want to be able to access your filter here, so make sure that you don't cover the filter housing too much. I could just easily move these wires and take this off. You also have to have your seat hook open like this, so you can put your seat on without any problems. I gotta tell you, I love all the treasures that you find on Amazon. Um, I also got this fastener set, 415 pieces. The uh, same company that did these, that Manalord company. And I just noticed that my bolt had fallen off here and this was just swinging wildly. It must have fallen off on the highway. And uh, I just got a quick little plastic screw from there just to hold it in place so I get a new bolt. Fit right in. 
Treasure on Amazon. Of course, I will link that down below in case you also like treasure like this. Okay, guys, we are done. So just, camera's very discreet. Can you even see it? Right there. Discreetly wired. Here's how I have this all in here. This is the USB connector that I put in earlier. Tucked the rear camera wire excess back here under this bracket. Tie wrapped the front camera and the power control module and tuck those right next to this fuse. Tuck the rest of those under the gas can. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we're good to go. So here's the, here's the rear. Again, very subtle. Let's put the seat on and take a look. Okay, seat fits on perfectly. Let's get that carbon fiber panel on. Make sure these little metal brackets didn't move. This one actually did. So just recenter it. All right, so now that everything looks good and everything fits, we'll go ahead and bolt that tank back in. Once again, I'm using this cool little universal socket from Sagotu. Slide this tank to the side a little bit. Let's get that battery bracket in, and then we will put on the carbon fiber side panel. Um, you want to put this in before you put the bolts in because it's it's hard to get in there with the bolts. You have to slide into the side to get it in. There she is. No wires hanging out, completely discreet. Just a cool looking camera in the front there. Now, again, I didn't use the adhesive on this yet. I'm gonna take a ride with it, see how it looks. And then what I'll do is I'll put the tape back on there and I'll put the tie wraps back on there just as a secondary measure, just a safety measure. Can't see any wires. Can't see anything other than the two little cameras if you know what to look for. Really good looking install, good looking cameras too. Nice sleek looking cameras. The install takes probably an hour and a half if you take your time like I did. I stopped and had dinner and my phone died and had a few things, so it probably took me like two hours, you know, taking breaks and stuff. But you could probably do this in an hour easily. All right guys, hope you liked this install of the Vesisto Dual 1080p motorcycle dash cam system. I'm going to be doing a full review of this after riding around for a week or two, so look forward to that. In the meantime, always remember the motto, always be kind of the necessary, no matter what you do, always go flat out.